Good morning, it's Rachel from Central Texas Zone 8B. I'm going to be doing a update on my backyard garden and how all the plants are doing. Not just the backyard, but the, the front yard planters and stuff. Just an update on my plants, I should say. An update on my plants in my house, just to show you all how everything's coming along um, and um, how the planters are doing and just everything in general. Um, and what the squirrels have eaten because the squirrels eat something always something <laughs> um anyhow i will uh turn the camera around or something and uh take y'all on a little tour update thing so yeah okay so stepping out my back door this is the first thing i see i have i moved my um two planters uh metal planters to be side by side um, the coleus is, that I grew from seed is just going absolutely bonkers and I love it. It is so beautiful. And something I recently discovered from um, these coleus here, uh, as you can see, I replaced the tall um, canna lilies with some dwarf ones and they just went through a bloom cycle here. You can see they had these really cute kind of sherberty, oops, sorry, hit the camera sherberty orange blooms that were really beautiful um, and that just happened here so um, but I uh, since the coleus that, that were supposed to be in there before were the Cleopatra ones and that wasn't what I was sent in the mail uh, so they didn't have that dramatic kind of purpley brown stripe I added in some purple coleus and I had just pinched that back to make it bushier um, and I found out that coleus make awesome little center arrangements um i mean some probably some of y'all already know this but i mean that you just stick them in water and they just last and last and last so i'm coming up here on needing to cut back a lot of my coleus or pinch it back um and so i'm just going to make some arrangements out of that i might do a little video up of it to show y'all or something i'm not entirely sure but regardless um the coleus i this coleus i pinched back over from this container has been in there for over uh, its little vase for over a week and it is just still just going 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 maybe it'll even send out some roots i don't know um anyhow so my um uh sorry there's some trash trucks or something going by and the street up so my caladiums finally uh popped up i think they're called hot flash or red flash or something like that these are more sun tolerant and this uh, whole section gets afternoon sun um, and the coleus definitely around 4 p.m. I mean, it gets that really hot um, evening sun uh, and it around three and four, probably probably between four and and three. Sorry, probably between three and five. It has heat welt and then it bounces back right after that. So both these containers well, actually all of these bigger containers are set up on drip the smaller ones i the smaller ones over here i water myself um, but those are all set up on drip anyhow uh this tree is just put out a ton of new growth you can see this whole top sections here are just new leaves that have been spit out from that um i mean back in where where these are native to they're, they're huge trees like huge trees so um yeah that's gonna get quite massive it's <laughs> the rubber tree um and then this little white spot on here is um, where I had it too close indoor to a um, light lamp. I didn't realize that the, one of the light lamps was like like a few inches away from it uh, and it uh, burned it <laughs> quite badly there. Um, anyhow, and then I had a bunch of slugs eat some of that. So I had to put some slug bait on that. Um, here's all my little plants I have kind of growing from seed. I have another, there's this, this plant came in um, and it was damaged. So it's not, it's not doing well. It's dropping all its leaves, but um, getting replacement. So, <clears throat> and then these guys are all things I, I grew that one from cuttings and uh, that's a bougainvillea. And then these are all little uh, vining plants and strawberries and things that I have. Um, but this is by far one of my favorite planters here. I just love the drama of it you can't even see the pot the pot itself is really beautiful it's got this just gorgeous deep blue color it's a little dusty right now um i'm a little sad you can't see that um really that dr the drama of the pot because it really is just pops against that lime green but i'm also okay with just i love this just massive spilling um 
sedum there in front and um, this mosaic coleus is just absolutely gorgeous. I've pinched it back um, once so far and it's just um, gotten a lot bushier and stuff. So really pretty. Um, over here, this is one of my planters I did up during the winter time and it is still, it's just got another flush, even though we're having temperatures in the hundreds, literally, it's, it's really nice outside right now. It's like the sun hasn't hit the backyard yet. So it's, it's very cool in the backyard. Um, but we've had temperatures in the hundreds and I'm just kind of keeping this one kind of in the shade from the, um, the grill here. And it's, it's still <laughs> pushing out flowers. It's kind of funny to me. I didn't think that this is my, uh, lychee tree here. Um, I did, it did drop all its leaves or a lot of its leaves when it was inside over winter time because I move it inside for winter. It generally doesn't get enough light and it's kind of unhappy. So, but then it'll quickly flush out its leaves again. So, um, here's how this pot's doing. So, so I come in, uh, pick a lot of the mints and spear, this is mint and spearmint. I pick a lot of those off, um, and pinch it back and use it a lot. And same with the, um, the basil. I love to use basil and stuff. So these are, I try to keep these little planters full of things that I use a lot. And so for instance, like this little cherry tomatoes, um, this is the sweet 100. I think I will probably always do this one. I keep it for the kids. They love this one. They love to come and, um, just pick off the, uh, tomatoes themselves and eat them. Um, I have heard a friend, so if I'm not a big vegetable garden person, obviously, um, but I, I tend to, to like to grow flowers more. Excuse this mess over here. This is all my extra pots and stuff. Um, but my friend who does garden a lot with vegetables told me she, sorry if it's too windy. Hold on one second. Okay, back. I just put a wind muffler on my um, phone. I'm shooting on my phone right now. Uh, so I added a little wind muffler to the speaker side. Hopefully that helps. But uh, anyhow, this is like a little, I don't know if this is, true or not, but, uh, so they're self, they're self, um, pollinating, I believe, but she says what helps with those self pollinating is to pinch the flowers, uh, so to make sure that it, the pollen mixes around or something. I'm not, not entirely sure about the process on that. You can let me know what you think. So I go ahead and just kind of, anytime I see a bloom, I pinch it a little bit just to kind of help the pollen to rub around or something. Um, anyhow, yeah, but this thing just spits out tons of little tomatoes. So if you have a little ones you garden with, this is a great, Sweet 100 is just a great one for the little kids because like every few days there's something for them to come pick off. And my kids love tomatoes. At least two of my kids do. So from the side entrance, this is kind of the first um, <clears throat> bit of the garden you see. Um, you kind of see it from this angle. You come in and you literally see this. Um, <clears throat> this is one of my easiest beds. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I have this purple hearts. I, I think there's tr Tratascantia. Is that how you say it? I'm not entirely sure. This is the same family. Uh, it's also Tratascantia, if I'm saying that right. I think this one's called like fuzzy, fuzzy ears or like kitten ears or something like that. They both, it blooms light purple flowers. So some blooms more kind of pinky purple flowers. Um, and I like having, they do well in, um, part shade, which this kind of, this, uh, Sunshine Ligustrum, which I just love this plant. I love it so much. It is one of my favorite staple pieces. I think I will always want to plant these around. I just think they have a kind of beautiful weeping habit. Um, the branches start to get a little heavy. I need to tie, this one has kind of gotten weighed down and I need to tie it back to the plant. Um, so it kind of uh, doesn't uh, overshadow some of the sun or sun plants I have, I had planted back there. But anyhow, the, the Tratascantia, if, if I'm saying that, I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, I love the purple with the lime green. I think that's just gorgeous. Um, try to get my shadow out of here. So I have, um, I had planted or put some, uh, cuttings of the, um, uh, the, fuzzy ears or whatever that, one, that one's called back here, um, to try to, I was initially going to have the, the kind of silver one and then the purple one and then the silver one over here, but that was kind of taking a really long time to get cuttings of that. Now that it's established and stuff, I think I could take a ton of cuttings and just, I literally just stick them in the ground and they're, they root and, you know, 
it's great. Um, so I have some sun loving plants in here. Obviously I have this rose. I think it got a little too wet. So the, when it, the buds get the sprinkler on them, sometimes they, uh, they get a little destroyed. Um, so I have some sun loving plants here. I think that there's like a skull cap there. And, um, uh, I know there's a milkweed back behind there. Um, I kind of like to sometimes tuck milkweeds. I don't know if you can see all the time. There's a milkweed back behind there. And I like to tuck those in behind things sometimes because so many things like to come and nibble on those. So anyhow, and then I have a pink salvia here. I might, like I said, I might move all these because this, the sun ones, because, um, yeah, it's getting this, this, uh, this uh, sunshine ligrostrum is just getting so huge and I, I'm tree forming it up a little bit. It's going to be a little mini tree and I like that look a lot. It almost kind of reminds me of like uh, one of those weeping Japanese maples a little bit. It's just really pretty. I love it. Um, and those are evergreen here. Another really cool thing about those. Uh, so I think I might go back to my original plan of doing the silver, the purple, and then the silver over here as because this has gotten in two, it, I think it's in one season, it's based or one year, it's basically gotten this huge from like a little tiny gallon pot that I planted. So this one's looking the little, this coleus over here, I think this was, sorry, my camera skills are horrible. This coleus, uh, this pot needs some water for one, but this coleus uh, gets too much sun. It's just not happy. And the sweet potato vine is, uh, really crowding out all the other stuff. So I'm just going to let the sweet potato vine take over that whole section. I think that's a really cool look. Anyhow, kind of wish I just planted it up with sweet potato vine and let it do its thing. I love my, um, variegated dwarf banana. It's put out so many pups. I think their original shoot is no longer, it, it probably passed away. And these are all its puppies growing up right here. Um, I might divide them here soon. Um, really pretty. Uh, this is doing pretty good. I'm going to pinch these back and we'll probably do an arrangement of coleus and I'll, I'll film that. This is going through, a f um, I needed to fertilize. Sorry. This one is, had just put out a big bloom flush. Um, and I hadn't fertilized it yet. So I've added fertilizer to there, but it, it's going to take a little while to recover from that. Um, this guy, first off, I love the blooms on this. Uh, let's see. They're just so pretty. Um, it's not, it gets full sun for quite a bit of the day. So I don't know why it's dropped so many leaves. Um, and it just seems a little unhappy or just not at performing at its best. And then my kids added some little characters here. It's great. Um, this is the, uh, Thyralis shower of gold and it's a bit all butted up. It's ready to bloom here. They're just, I can't wait. They're beautiful. Um, it's getting more sun than it did last year. And this has grown back from the ground because it, um, every winter this kind of dies down to the ground and I should have cut back all the dead branches, but I didn't. And so, yeah, mm -hmm, that happened. This is my sad little pot that I still haven't decided what to do with because, <sighs> The squirrels. So <laughs> this is just leftover from last year. Um, I have a American butteberry back there and it's got those cute puffy little flowers and I can see a little um, pollinator on there. It looks like some kind of black bee. It's really cute. Fuzzy. Um, this planter pot I am very thrilled with right now. I love this pop of yellow. The um, uh, What am I trying to say? The, the foliage from it is kind of blends in with the um, bamboo. So that part isn't like a great standout, but the yellow pops so much. I mean, the yellow just is such a great pop. Um, and I love it in here, especially I, I, what are these called flapjacks or whatever. I love it in there with that. Um, and then this is one of my favorite, um, petunias or yeah, I just, I love that. I love it so much. It's so just so gorgeous. I mean, just really, really beautiful. Um, and then I like the kind of the odd, the oddness of this kangaroo paw there and there. It just kind of throws you off a little bit. Here are some more coleus that I grew from seed. Really beautiful. I did not expect the leaves to get this big. There's, it was a mixed variety, um, of stuff. And this, uh, has been blooming nonstop. The 
dill that I planted in there. You can kind of see it right there. They're really just getting taken over by everything else. Um, and then I love the Creeping Jenny spilling down over this blue pot. Love it so, so much. This is another planter I love. This one is very drought tolerant. Um, it has a twisted leaf, ag or not agave, twisted leaf yucca in there that does well in part shade. Um, and I love the variegated fig. I think that's just really cool looking. And then I love the bronze fennel in there. It's a little hard to pick it up on the camera, but it just adds just such a nice, like wavy soft fern, fern-like fern texture to that that planter. So it's, it's very, um, it's like soft and ferny. And then these kind of sharper, very architectural, <laughs> um, cool architectural interest of the, um, uh, yucca. So anyhow, the stones are doing well keeping the squirrels out of that one. Over here, I had a beautiful tomato plant. Let's see here. It was the um, Cherokee purple that had a bunch of little tomatoes on it. It was like up to here. It was huge. And I've been doing great. No interest from squirrels whatsoever. And it was obviously I had it, you know, staked up and stuff. And then I left for two days, three days came back to little shreds of the plants in here and on the ground and everything like that. And the squirrels had eaten through, eaten through the stems and let everything fall and it all died and shriveled and the whole plant's gone. <laughs> so obviously I, if I put tomato, this is my first time putting a tomato out on this section of the de deck. My other one is right over there. So obviously I need to net these to keep the squirrels off of them. I hate netting things because it, I really don't like that look, but I, I mean, it's just, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, this section has been kind of my sticking things in here and seeing what works and I'm really loving it. I have this mix of a Juga and then this, um, I can never remember what it's called. It's called like pineapple sage or something like that. Um, uh, there's a couple names for it and I will, or like pineapple geranium, or I, I don't know. I'll put up, I'll research and I'll put it up um, and uh, uh, let y'all know what it is. But I love it, it blooms purple flowers, which I think looks really great with these coleus that put out purple, uh, new purple growth. And then I actually have another variety of coleus in here. These are little tiny ones that just put out like white, um, some white, really bright white limey kind of color. Anyhow, I love this little section here. Um, my, oh, sorry, my dahlias are still doing really good. Uh, I think I noticed some buds on some, maybe not, maybe I'm deluding myself. I don't know. That one looks like it's got some little worm issues eating up the leaves. This, these ones over here are still doing really good. Um, no no buds as far as I can see yet. Okay. Uh, this section over here is uh, doing okay. This rose is like putting on a lot of blooms and I love how, <clears throat> how hot peppery those blooms are and they're kind of petite. They're not the greatest for cutting, I think, but uh, these dahlias are starting to kind of fizzle out. These are the ones I bought from Lowe's, not the tuber. I didn't buy the tubers. So they're not doing the hottest yet, um, but I'll see how, it also looks like something's been eating them. So we'll see, we'll see how that, that goes. Um, but I was really hoping for these fennel to like take off and get really huge and create this kind of like ferny swaying backdrop here. Um, so I may need to, you know, this is, this bed is like, <sighs> It's an experiment, really. I don't know this section in particular because it gets weird sun. Not really sure if it should be sun, full sun plants or, or you know, part shade plants or something. I'm not entirely sure. So two of the Gerber daisies are still doing really good, but one of them got got fried. I'm not sure why. Uh, I do know the squirrels ate at it at one point. So, and then the day lilies obviously have a lot of growing to do. They're they're in this little horseshoe shape here, and they're babies um but they're they've already put on blooms and there are a variety of different blooms and this one's got a bloom ready to go um here in 
probably a few days or a week. Um, this section's uh, filling in really nicely. I love the coleus right here. Absolutely love that, especially with the lime green next to that burgundy color. It is just ooh, so pretty. Um, everything's filling in really nicely. Uh, there's the purple basil I grew from seed. There's uh, some, I think that's actually the lemon basil I grew from seed. And then there's the other purple basil I grew from seed. I love this um, white plumbago here. Uh, when it blooms, you can see the blooms. They just, when it blooms, all, as this gets bigger and it just blooms all over, it's just gonna be so pretty. I feel like it almost glows in the evening times. Um, this silver one is, I need to cut back some of the, the dead foliage. It's still doing fine. I just need to kind of thin it out a little bit and stuff. But I really wanted to show y'all guys how the caladiums are doing over here because they're starting to pop up really, really well. I mean, they're just so beautiful. Like the coloring on that is just amazing. And um, this um, pink Turk's cap is also um, sending out some other little um, little seedlings are popping up or something, I guess. Um, and I, it's just been putting on these really cute little flowers. I'll show you. Just, I just think this, there's such a pretty delicate flower. I don't care if these, like, honestly, if this whole bed was pink Turk's cap, I'd be totally cool with that. Um, this is, the color of the um, uh, what, words are failing me. Anyhow, I really like the purple, the pink and green, and then I'm hoping the white get a little taller. They were a little slower to come up, so I, I was hoping they would be stand up a little bit taller just to kind of really pop in the back. Um, this a lot of my grasses have a little bit of winter damage on them. Um, I forget what this plant is called. It blooms little flowers. Um, I, and then in the new growth puts out these really cool um, kind of coloration to them. Uh, and I really uh, love that plant. Um, I try to cut it back quite a bit. Otherwise it gets really tall and just kind of drowns all the other plants in it. It is not a native. I think it's called like blood dragon or something like that. I'll try to find the name for it before I, um, you know, really put out a title <laughs> confidently. Um, but just, I mean, like, seriously, who, you don't need flowers when you have this kind of drama. It's just, it looks like you're looking under a microscope and you're seeing like all those really cool things moving around, germs and stuff. <laughs> That's really what it looks like. Um, it's my oak leaf hydrangea. The, I, my blooms on these always turn brown really quickly. And I feel like that's probably because I'm underwatering the plant. And so it's not supporting the, um, it's not supporting the, the blooms for staying on very long. Uh, the shrimp plant I moved over here is doing great. My uh, little honey oak leaf hydrangea is just so cute. Love it. And then my Japanese maple's doing great too. I probably need to kind of thin out a few of the branches because I really wanted to have just one of those really interesting shapes to it. I love, I love those um, uh, Japanese maples that are just like got the all the weird pruning and uh, not weird pruning, but like interesting. It's just really, really interesting. And then this is a mojo that's a dwarf um, pittosporum. And I really like the look of that with the um, Japanese maple. So I'm hoping this will kind of grow in and fill in this whole area. Let me back up a little bit here. Sorry, the sun just came out really harsh. So over here is my um, orchid tree. This is a native. And then I have some blue plumbago. This blooms white flowers. This blooms those gorgeous blue flowers. And then I sprinkled a lot of seeds. You can see the seedlings popping up everywhere for um, our native salvias. So I have a pink one here. I think this is coral nymph. And then this is the, the regular red one. And those kind of grow all over. I think I have a volunteer sunflower right here. I'm just going to let it do its thing. And then this is one of those pots. It's a, uh, I cut out the bottom of it and I put in a uh, lavender 
and um, hopefully the lavender can just, you know, put down tap roots through the bottom of the pot. Um, and it's been doing really well. So I think it's really liking what's going on here. It's because this is pretty heavy clay soil. So I didn't want to plant it in the clay soil and I wanted to um, uh, have some something kind of interesting and up higher why things grew around it. So this is kind of my bed that I kind of just like throw seeds in and let it <laughs> let them do their thing. I try to throw native seeds. Oh, look, I think there's actually another um, sunflower over there. I've been seeing a lot of sunflowers popping up around the neighborhood. So I think uh, a lot of people are growing sunflowers in the neighborhood and then the birds are spreading the seeds around, which is, you know, I, I think is cool. Um, so we have this uh, invasive vine from our neighbor's yard and every year I have to pull it off the fence. It's like creeping out everywhere. I need to get it before it goes. My kids have been playing back there. It, it's just coming over the fence everywhere. And when you pull it off the fence, it actually pulls off the staining too. So it's one of those ones that like suckers into buildings and wood and stuff. This guy, uh, I think it's his third year in the ground or second year, maybe second year. I'm not entirely sure, but it was small when I bought it. And this is how much it's grown since then. So like, don't be discouraged by planting tiny things. They will, they will grow. <laughs> okay. And sometimes quicker than you think, but this is my side yard garden. I call it my butterfly garden. Um, I try to plant a lot of flowering things that um, the pollinators love to. So I have a lot of um, shrubby bone sets. Um, there's a ton of milkweed seeded around in here and I just let it grow. This is a bear grass that's a native. It has these really cool blooms. Um, it, that's obviously kind of a baby. They get really big, but I highly recommend using that if you want something really interesting in your yard. Um, I need to fix this trellis. It's leaning everywhere, but this is my Belinda's climbing rose. Oh, the um, AC just kicked on. So I'm gonna play music while I go through this garden here so you don't have to listen to that. Thank you. 
Okay, so that is the update for my yard um, and planters and everything like that. I hope y'all uh, have enjoyed seeing their progress throughout um, the year so far and just like how tiny they started out and then just a few months later how full they look. Probably by the end of summer I'm going to have to be like putting water trays underneath all of them so that they can really soak up more water because the plant systems will have to be will already be the plant roots, roots will already be so established. I mean, I already had to up pot um, one of the ones that I uh, had filmed in here. It was in a little green pot before, and then I moved it up to a larger kind of wicker basket, dark wicker basket looking pot um, that was much larger because it had already outgrown its um, container. I mean, just like that. So um, anyhow, I will see y'all in the next video and uh, hopefully, hopefully I'm getting a little less awkward about talking in front of the camera. Um, I apologize for my awkwardness. Um, I'm still not like super comfortable talking in front of the camera all the time. When I was younger, I used to be the person who always like took the pictures of my friends and stuff. So I was never really, like, really in them. Um, which is like much more my comfort zone. Um, but again, like I really wanted a channel for, you know, Texas that followed a flower garden. And there's a lot of ones out there for, um, sorry, the bamboo's getting in there. There's a lot of ones out there for growing vegetables, but I, I couldn't at the time when I was looking, I could not find any that followed one garden for flowers that did flowers here in Texas. And so I just wanted to, that's really where my passions lie. I love, I love flowering plants. I love, I love evergreens too. I'm not a huge vegetable garden gardener. I grow a few things that I know I'm going to use in the kitchen, um, or in cocktails. And that's, that's pretty much it. And then the tomatoes I grow for my kids. Um, so I just really wanted a channel that, and I couldn't find it. And you know, there may be some out there now, um, that aren't vegetable, uh, veggie based. I still haven't really found anything. Most of the stuff is, is for growing, um, crops and things and, uh, veggies and stuff, which I'd like to get into sometime, but like really, honestly, what I really love doing is growing flowers and, and just, um, having a garden, a plant garden. And, um, I definitely agree that, you can use herbs in the garden and it looks really beautiful. I don't think, I think they can be both ornamental and serve a purpose of, you know, feeding you and flavoring things and stuff. So I am very, I like, I love the movement that, you know, has been going on of like putting those kind of plants in the garden to um, add interest and in, in things and that they can be, cause they really can be beautiful, you know, um, just used in the landscape as, as decorating. Um, but anyhow, uh, that's a lot of ums and uhs. Uh, I will see y'all, uh, in the next video. Bye.